Section 10 of Aesop's Fables, a new translation, written by Aesop, translated by V. S. Vernon Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This section has been read by Roslyn Carlyle. The Three Tradesmen the citizens of a certain city were debating about the best material to use in the fortifications which were about to be erected for the greater security of the town. A carpenter got up and advised the use of wood, which he said was readily procurable and easily worked. A stonemason objected to wood, on the grounds that it was so inflammable, and recommended stones instead. Then a tanner got on his legs and said, in my opinion, there's nothing like leather. The moral of the story is, every man for himself. The Mouse and the Bull A bull gave chase to a mouse, which had bitten him in the nose. But the mouse was too quick for him, and slipped into a hole in the wall. The bull charged furiously into the wall again and again until he was tired out, and sank down on the ground exhausted with his efforts. When all was quiet, the mouse darted out and bit him again. Beside himself with rage, he started to his feet, but by that time the mouse was back in his hole again, and the bull could do nothing but bellow and fume in helpless anger. Presently he heard a shrill little voice say from inside the wall, you big fellows don't always have it your own way, you see. Sometimes we little ones come off best. Moral of the story is the battle is not always to the strong. The Hare and the Hound A hound startled a hare from her warren and pursued her for some distance. But as she was gradually getting away from him, he gave up the chase. A rustic, who had seen the race, met the hound as he was returning, and taunted him with his defeat. "'The little one was too much for you,' said he. "'Ah, oh, well,' said the hound, "'don't forget. It's one thing to be running for your dinner, but quite another to be running for your life.'" THE TOWN MOUSE AND THE COUNTRY MOUSE A town mouse and a country mouse were acquaintances and the country mouse one day invited his friend to come and see him at his home in the fields. The town mouse came, and they sat down to a dinner of barley corns and roots, the latter of which had a distinctly earthy flavour. The fare was not much to the taste of the guest, and presently he broke out with, "'My poor dear friend, you live here no better than the ants. Now you should just see how I fare. My larder is a regular horn of plenty. You must come and stay with me, and I promise you, you shall live on the fat of the land.' So when he returned to town, he took the country mouse with him, and showed him into a larder containing flour and oatmeal and figs and honey and dates.' The country mouse had never seen anything like it, and sat down to enjoy the luxuries his friend provided. But before they had well begun, the door of the larder opened, and someone came in. The two mice scampered off and hid themselves in a narrow and exceedingly uncomfortable hole. Presently, when all was quiet, they ventured out again, but someone else came in, and off they scuttled again. This was too much for the visitor. Goodbye, said he. I'm off. You live in the lap of luxury, I can see, but you are surrounded by dangers, whereas at home I can enjoy my simple dinner of roots and corn in peace. The Lion and the Bull A lion saw a fine, fat bull pasturing amongst a herd of cattle, and cast about for some means of getting him into his clutches. So he sent him a word that he was sacrificing a sheep, and asked if he would do the lion the honour of dining with him. The bull accepted the invitation, but, on arriving at the lion's den, he saw a great array of saucepans and spits, but no sign of a sheep. So he turned on his heel and walked quietly away. The lion called after him in an injured tone to ask the reason, and the bull turned round and said, 
I have reason enough. When I saw all your preparations, it struck me at once that the victim was to be a bull and not a sheep. The moral of the story is, the net is spread in vain if it's in sight of the bird. The Wolf, the Fox, and the Ape A wolf charged a fox with theft, which he denied, and the case was brought before an ape to be tried. When he had heard the evidence on both sides, the ape gave judgment as follows. I do not think, he said, that you, a wolf, ever lost what you claim, but all the same I believe that you, fox, are guilty of the theft in spite of all your denials. The moral of the story is, the dishonest get no credit, even if they act honestly. The Eagle and the Cox There were two cocks in the same farmyard, and they fought to decide who should be master. When the fight was over, the beaten one went and hid himself in a dark corner, while the victor flew up onto the roof of the stables and crowed lustily. But an eagle espied him from high up in the sky and swooped down and carried him off. Forthwith the other cock came out of his corner and ruled the roost without a rival. And the moral of the story is, pride comes before a fall. The Escaped Jackdaw A man caught a jackdaw and tied a piece of string to one of its legs, and then he gave it to his children for a pet but the jackdaw didn't at all like having to live with people. So, after a while, when he seemed to have become fairly tame and they didn't watch him so closely, he slipped away and flew back to his old haunts. Unfortunately, the string was still on his leg, and before long it got entangled in the branches of a tree, and the jackdaw couldn't get free, try as he would. He saw it was all up with him and cried in despair, Alas, in gaining my freedom, I have lost my life! THE FARMER AND THE FOX A farmer was greatly annoyed by a fox, which came prowling about his yard at night and carried off his fowls. So he set a trap for him and caught him, and in order to be revenged upon him, he tied a bunch of tow to his tail and set fire to it and let him go. As ill luck would have it, however, the fox made straight for the fields, where the corn was standing ripe and ready for cutting. It quickly caught fire and was all burnt up, and the farmer lost all of his harvest. The moral of this story is that revenge is a two-edged sword. Venus and the Cat A cat fell in love with a handsome young man and begged the goddess Venus to change her into a woman. Venus was very gracious about it, and changed her at once into a beautiful maiden, whom the young man fell in love with at first sight, and shortly afterwards they married. One day Venus thought she would like to see whether the cat had changed her habits as well as her form, so she let a mouse run loose in the room where they were. Forgetting everything, the young woman had no sooner seen the mouse than up she jumped, and was after it like a shot, at which the goddess was so disgusted that she changed her back again into a cat. The Crow and the Swan A crow was filled with envy on seeing the beautiful white plumage of a swan, and thought it was due to the water in which the swan constantly bathed and swam. So he left the neighbourhood of the altars, where he got his living by picking up bits of the meat offered in sacrifice, and he went and lived amongst the pools and streams. But though he bathed and washed his feathers many times a day, he didn't make them any whiter, and at last he died of hunger into the bargain. The moral of the story is, you may change your habits, but not your nature. THE STAG WITH ONE EYE A stag, blind of one eye, was grazing close to the seashore, and kept his sound eye turned towards the land, so as to be able to perceive the approach of the hounds, while the blind eye he turned towards the sea, never suspecting that any danger would threaten him from that quarter. As it fell out, however, 
some sailors, coasting along the shore, spied him and shot an arrow at him by which he was mortally wounded. As he lay dying, he said to himself, Wretch that I am, I bethought me of the dangers of the land, whence none assailed me. But I fear no peril from the sea, yet thence has come my ruin. The moral of the story is, misfortune often assails us from an unexpected quarter. The Fly and the Draft Mule A fly sat on one of the shafts of a cart, and said to the mule who was pulling it, How slow are you? Do mend your pace, or I shall have to use my sting as a goad. The mule was not in the least disturbed. Behind me, in the cart, said he, sits my master. He holds the reins and flicks me with his whip, and him I obey. But I don't want any of your impertinence. I know when I may dawdle and when I may not. The Cock and the Jewel A cock, scratching the ground for something to eat, turned up a jewel that had by chance been dropped there. Ho, oh, said he, a fine thing you are, no doubt, and had your owner found you, great would his joy have been. But for me, give me a single grain of corn before all the jewels in the world. The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf hung about near a flock of sheep for a long time, but made no attempt to molest them. The shepherd at first kept a sharp eye on him, for he naturally thought he meant mischief. But as time went by, and the wolf showed no inclination to meddle with the flock, he began to look upon him more as a protector than as an enemy, and when one day some errand took him to the city, he felt no uneasiness at leaving the wolf with the sheep. But as soon as his back was turned, the wolf attacked them, and killed a greater number. When the shepherd returned and saw the havoc that the wolf had wrought, he cried, It serves me right for trusting my flock to a wolf. End of section 10